Are you sitting comfortably? Then we shall begin. I'm going to be reading extracts from this. Iron Maiden, Running Free. The official story of Iron Maiden, written by Gary Bushell and Ross Halfin. First edition, published 1984. Prologue. Whose damn fool idea was it to give me a loop tape of the new Iron Maiden album Power Slave? And what lily-livered non-believer put it about that Maiden was softening up? I should have known that was about as likely as a pub with free beer. My mouth's dry, my vision's blurred, my ears ache, and my head throbs like an amputated leg. I can scarcely believe what I'm hearing. This ain't the happy sound of daytime Radio 1. It ain't even the vaguely more listenable AOR of heavy rotation MTV. This sounds more like a savage stampede of butchering buccaneers, a souped-up city-levelling hurricane, or a barroom brawl of brain-bruising belligerents. Rhythms so fast they scorch the arse of any punk band you could name, rock it out of the speakers like a vicar from a cat house raid. Guitars blaze like forest fires, and melodies so boisterous they'd make a van load of tanked up West Ham supporters sound like a church choir, bestow a magnetic addictiveness to riffs harder than marble slabs and heavier than waterlogged cruisers. Hard as it is to believe, Power Slave actually tops everything this band have recorded before. And when you've got a history of vinyl accomplishments as handsome as Maiden's, this takes some doing. They always were a bit special. I knew that as soon as I heard the Soundhouse tapes way back then. Christ, that seems like 30 years ago now, although it's more like five. Another world. Iron Maiden were never just another heavy metal band. They always had a glorious individuality. You could never mistake a Maiden tune for any other band's. No one before or since has come up with a cranium-kicking cocktail quite like their maddening mix of hyper-energy, muscle melodies, killer clout, twin guitar harmonies and historical histrionics. <laughs> Somehow they've managed to combine being intelligent and musical with total noise and chilling aggression and kept on getting better, forever refining their uniqueness. Jerry Lee Lewis once said, you're either hot or you're cold, if you're lukewarm, the Lord will spew you out of his mouth. If Maiden were hot back in 79, right now they're more like an exploding petrol bomb in a pepper factory. It's been my privilege to watch them grow, shedding skins and gaining pounds along the way. But the weight they've gained has always been meat, no fat. This book tells their story, the story of a band and the story of a dream. It's about the rise of a band from the low-rent dives of London's East End to the biggest stadiums in the world. A rise that's been fuelled on one hand by graft, the unlimited stamina and drive that has seen them take on the most gruelling gig schedule any band has ever attempted, and on the other hand by a mighty mixture of West Ham, Ruddles and Remy, with a large helping of Jimmy Jones jokes to wash it all down with. Through their talent and their commitment, Iron Maiden have built themselves into a viable alternative to the gutless banality of the pop charts, shining like crazy diamonds in a cesspit of rancid shit. And yet they've never lost their heads on any snobby star trips. They've never lost their down-to-earth attitudes, never forgotten their roots, never forgotten why they formed the band in the first place. Hell, I'd crucify them twice over in print if they ever had. This may be the official biography, but I'm writing it because I believe it, not because I'm getting paid by the word. And by the way, Rod, about that check. Maiden's story is the stuff dreams are made of. It boils down to a fan who forged his own band and his teenage hero's image, built it up against all the odds, and finally led it on to overshadow the old timers. Dreams don't come true that often, and that's what makes this one so worth recording. You see? Oh Christ, the loop tape's just started up again, and the letter from the maiden office in front of me says, I've only got 20 days to try and do the band justice. 20 days! 
I've got as much chance of that as Charlton have of winning when they were 3-0 down with a minute on the clock. But what you're holding in your hands is just about my best shot, because that's exactly what Iron Maiden deserve. Gary Bushell.